Hi there viewers and welcome to the Repair It Don't Wreck It channel. Today we're going to do battery maintenance and voltage drop tests on a 17 kilowatt Generac generator. Before we get started, I wanted to show you where the fuse was that supplies 120 volts to the controller that's located in the generator. In this particular situation, the transfer switch is located in the basement. This fuse is clearly marked as T1 in the transfer switch. It protects the controller that houses the integral battery charger. If this fuse is blown, the charger will not function and the battery will drain down in a short period of time. The way I'm going to check this fuse is to put the black lead on the neutral connection bus bar and the red lead on one side of the fuse. Here I'm getting 124 volts. Then I take the red lead and put it on the other side of the fuse and I still have 124 volts. This tells me two things. One, the fuse is good, and two, the voltage is correct. Now that we're outside, lift up the lid and remove the front cover in preparation to start the project. Remove the 7.5 amp fuse from the controller and shut off the fuel supply. As you can see, we were ready for a battery service. That's a lot of deposit on that negative terminal. What I'm going to do is loosen the bolt with the half inch wrench. Even though it will be loosened, it's still going to be sticky. So what I'm going to do is take a screwdriver and try and separate the joint a little bit. This way, when I put my pliers on, I'm not gonna be forcing anything. When removing the battery, always remove the negative cable first. This way, if your wrench accidentally hits the frame, you don't create a short circuit. Now that the negative side is off, we can go after the positive side. You can see when I put my wrench on, that bolt was a little loose. You can tighten these battery cables, and after a period of time, they will get loose. The lead is very malleable and will stretch with time. What I like to do is use the plastic cap to keep it from touching the frame. If you don't have one, you could use a leather glove or something similar to that. Another option is to remove the fuse from the T1 terminal in the transfer switch. This may not be necessary to protect the controller, but why take a chance? Make up a paste of baking soda and water and brush it all over the top of the battery. This will neutralize any acid that is accumulated there. Now's your chance to clean up the battery tray inside the generator. It doesn't look too bad, but this is a perfect opportunity to clean it up. Always operate the generator with the front cover and the lid down. This is an air-cooled unit, so they need to be in place for optimum cooling. This is a three-quarter fitting brush that I use in plumbing to clean up copper fittings. It's the perfect size for this. What you want to do is get the lead so it's bright and shiny. It's a little bit of work to clean the fitting, but as you can see, it was worth it. Now that the acid has been neutralized, wash off the battery in a safe place. Even though this is a battery on your generator, this could be one on your car, and all the procedures here would be exactly the same. Most Generac dealers will recommend changing the battery every four years. Once you've finished rinsing it off, give it a bit of a wipe down and I was lucky enough to have a compressor close by and blew off any excess water. Before you put the battery in, wash out the battery tray compartment thoroughly. All you need to clean this out is a rag and some plain water. One last clean up with the three quarter inch fitting brush. Before I install the battery, I want to go over the post just one more time. This is some plumber's sandpaper that I use that works really good in this situation. One more thing we can do before installing the battery is to load test it. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't pick up the LED display, but we did get a green light, so we passed. Installation is the reversal of removal. Connect the positive cable first. 
and putting dielectric grease on the posts. This keeps the air and the water from getting between the post and the clamp. Apparently when that reacts with the acid, that's what creates the deposit. When pushing the battery into position, these cables are a little long, so make sure they're not rubbing up against anything sharp or jammed up against the regulator. The first test I'm going to perform is to see how much the voltage drops on the battery when I crank the motor. I have turned off the fuel supply so it doesn't start. The voltage drop was 1.75 volts, which is perfectly acceptable. Two volts or less is what we're looking for. Now we're going to do a voltage drop test on the negative battery cable. One lead will go to the negative battery post and the other one will go to the motor mount stud. I have set the multimeter up to read in millivolts DC. Once it's stabilized, we're looking around 9.9, 10 millivolts, which is very good. These numbers are low because the generator is running. Later in the video, I will do the same test without it running. You will see the difference. The next voltage drop test is to check between the negative post and the negative battery cable. As you can see, there is no voltage drop. So in essence, the post and the cable are acting as one. Now we're gonna perform the same tests on the positive cable. The results are exactly the same as the negative. I'm happy with this. Now we're gonna do a voltage drop test on the positive battery cable. One of the multimeter leads will go to the stud that's on the starter, and the other one will go on the positive post battery cable clamp. By now you've noticed that this is not the same battery as the one at the beginning of the video. I wanted to make some changes, but could not get back to the same unit. This one we're working on is exactly the same, except a little smaller. Now I started up the machine. You can see that we're sitting around 2.2 millivolts. This is a very good reading also. The test to this point should be 150 millivolts or less. The next tests are done with the fuel supply turned off so the generator doesn't start. This will ensure that we're fully stressing the cables and checking the condition they're in. Once the multimeter settled down, we ended up around 94 millivolts. Anywhere between 100 and 300 is acceptable. Now we're gonna do the same test on the positive cable. It runs from the positive terminal on the battery to the stud at the positive connection on the starter motor. The highest millivolts we had was 188 and then seemed to drop down at an average of 100 millivolts. The last test we're going to do is to check for voltage drop between the positive battery post and the positive battery cable. As you can see, we have zero or 0.1 millivolts. This is very low, almost zero like it was when we were running the generator. Let's do it again. Basically the same thing, so it doesn't make much difference on these short connections. Don't forget to put the plastic protective cap over the stud at the starter motor. To recap, with the generator running, the cables were averaging between 2 and 10 millivolts. With the generator only cranking, we averaged around 100 millivolts, which is also good. A millivolt is one one thousandth of a volt. Now, let's go on a journey down the back of the generator to see where those ground cables are connected. The braided cable coming into view is connected to the chassis at one end and at the other end is connected to the bolt that holds the motor mount to the chassis. On the left side of the screen, you can see the negative battery cable is connected to a bolt that connects the motor to the motor mount. The goal of this maintenance is to move as much as the unwanted resistance in a circuit. We want all of that voltage to go to the device that is doing the work, such as a starter in the starter circuit. If you need to add water to a battery, always use distilled water and never let the water get below the lead plates. Simply put, low voltage drop, low resistance, high voltage drop, high resistance. I know the generator is in the running mode, but let's review. Turn on the fuel supply, install the 7.5 amp fuse in the controller. Set the controller to the off position. 
Since we created an alarm, press escape, then enter. Press manual to start the unit and check to make sure everything is connected properly. After that, put it in the auto position and you're ready. Now it's time to put the front door on and close the lid on this job. The slots on the bottom of the chassis will take the pins that are located on the front door at the bottom. The top pins on the chassis, they will go into the elongated slots at the top of the door, right there. Make sure you check out my channel for other maintenance videos, including Generac generators. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, repair it. Don't wreck it. Thanks for watching.